This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. I can hear your heartbeat. (laughs) I will find you. I'll find you. You fuck. How many weapons you carry besides this cannon? An MP15. What else? A Glock 50. And? An A3 assault shotgun. That's not paranoid. I don't know what the fuck is. I'm surprised you don't have a grenade launcher. I couldn't get a permit. I wonder if he stood on the bed to paint it. If he did, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Why? He has to be 10 feet tall. You really want to know? Tell me. Not because you caused the death of your best friend. Not because you ran away with his wife. Not because you then dumped her. No, but because you're past in stone. You're a liability. You're a fucking menace. What's so great about Dick Dirk? Are you telling me there's something running around loose in this city, ripping the hearts out of people and eating them? So they can take their souls back to hell. Hey, everybody. This is Barrel Age Flicks. I'm Lenny. Yeah, man. And this is... Hey, this is Ron. Let's drink and talk some movies. We also have... What's going on, you fucking nerds? This is Tyler. Let's talk about some modern mythology. And finally... This is Stu. Let's drink, motherfucker. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on our split-second episode. It is a movie starring Rugger Howard. We're going to get into that in a second. But first, as always, we're going to talk about our alcohol of choice for this particular film. I chose the Jägermeister Cold Brew. Now... Uh, this is Jägermeister, but it's got a like a hint of coffee and actually a small hint of chocolate in there, too. See if you guys can taste that. Hmm. Uh, originally, this was, uh, believe it or not, um, Jägermeister was brewed as a drink that you drink after dinner to help you digest your food. Kind of interesting factoid there. I did not know that. Um, and this is, I swear to God, you guys can look this up on WebMD. There's details on this, but apparently... Jägermeister in particular helps with inflammation, reducing inflammation. What? Redu- I swear to God, reducing blood sugar. What? So there's that. Hey. And lower risk of strokes. I read that on WebMD. Take it for what it is. If y'all want to look into it more, you can. Hang on, hang on, hang on. WebMD. Fuck, I got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it doesn't, it doesn't. Fix cancer, so that sucks for you. But uh, so this uh, particular uh, blend of Jägermeister cold brew came out in the winter of 2019, so it's pretty really recent. Yeah. Uh, one other fun fact before we get into trying out the alcohol: the design of the bottle was actually originally uh, the 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 creator of it, which was Wilhelm Mast, was his name. He came up with the design of the bottle based off of taking different types of bottle designs and dropping them on the ground until he came up with one that wouldn't break. Really? Yeah. That's why we have, if you notice why the glass it's is so thick, it's, it's very yeah. thick. It's very, a very hearty. Like if you were to knock someone upside the head with this thing, it would probably really freaking fuck them you up. You know what? I, I can actually prove that point because I have a bar in my, uh, my man cave, of course, and, uh, all my alcohol behind me on my shelf all fell. It's called crashing down and basically ruining my carpet. The Jägermeister bottle did not break, so you yep. have a point on that. Yeah, the, he just specifically designed the bottle that way because that was the design that was the most sturdiest and strongest. So made for professional drinkers. Fuck yeah! So if you get yeah. a little too drunk and you drop the bottle, it's all right. You got Jager it for later. Bombs. You'll wake up; it'll be re- laying next to you, ready to go. All right, you guys. Oh, but yeah, well, you you forgot to bring up the one thing. What's that? How this is uh, related to your movie? So you will find out um, as we go through the movie, but uh, the, the the main character uh rudger howard's character that he plays harley stone such a fucking cool name uh this dude li- literally lives off of coffee and chocolate that's his that's his in real life you'd walk around with constant diarrhea and stomach cramps but this guy that's what he lives off of i think you smoke too much drink too much coffee and eat too much sugar it helps ease the tension exactly so 
Um, this is a nod to that, and we're going to go ahead and give this a try, you guys. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Prost. All right. Oh, my God. I love that. God, movie. dude. All right. See, I'm going to say this flat out. Can I, 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 let me give my review first. Sure. Go for it. I love Jaeger. I, a lot of people hate it for some reason. I guess people have a bad pass with it. I guess getting drunk on Jaeger shots. But I think it's the licorice. A lot of people But that's don't what like I love. I, I remember Good and Plenty's, you know, the candy, good, the Good and Plenty's and everything else. It, it was just one of my favorites. I fucking love Jaeger. So I'm going to go get it. Go ahead. I'm, I will say this, though. I really don't taste much of the coffee in it. Really? I don't know if you guys taste it. I, I do. really, I do. It, to me, it just tastes like regular Jaeger, in my opinion. It's just a li- there's a little bit of a taste of coffee, but not much. Not, not to call it a coffee Jaeger, in my opinion. Okay. So but my my review would be two thumbs up. Two I would give it two up. thumbs up. Yeah, I, I love the Jaeger taste. I love the licorice. So I'm going to pass it off to Tyler because I'm very curious because he handed off his glass after trying it. So I want to know what his opinion is. Oh, that's a two thumbs up then, all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's a dangerous drink. I can't drink it. Yeah, no, no. I'm too sober to enjoy that shit. Fuck that. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I agree I agree with, with Ron. Like, I think it's it just tastes like Jaeger. I don't, I don't like the coffee. Because like, cause as far as, uh, as Harley Stone's... Uh, thing about about coffee like he like needs it to fucking live whatever like that dude's my spirit animal when it comes to that shit like i fucking i love oh, yeah. coffee i need it um like i drink my coffee black because i want to fucking taste it yeah. yeah like but that is dog shit like i don't really <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. What? so you, all right is it because you don't like licorice well so i don't really have, i only have a huge problem with licorice whatever i really don't like black licorice and like again like it's just it's sweet it's just way too sweet <laughs> that's, I think that's a common so is yeah, that, is that, that's what i mean is that two thumbs down or what do we yeah, no, two, th- two thumbs all the way down. Yeah. Oh, all we right. have another one. So just like my right. peanut butter whiskey shit. That this I- is this is fucking great. All, all right. right. Stu, How about you, Stu? Stu? What do you got for me? Okay. Um, I'm okay with the Jaeger. Uh, I'm okay with black licorice. And that, to me, is a, a very big divide. You either love it or you hate it for the most part. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm okay with it. it you taste the I, coffee? Yeah, I, t- I definitely taste do the you? coffee. Absolutely. I and I do see the chocolate undertones that you're talking oh, about. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I was wondering absolutely. if I could taste the chocolate. See, I do taste that, but... I'd, I would I would probably have this. I'd order this before I would order a regular Jaeger shot. Okay, um, but eh, I, I'm not going to be thumbs up or thumbs. Up. I'm I'm closed fist so, on this one. Well, it's you could do okay. like a thumbs up and down. Well, like they, that's usually when Siskel and Ebert were kind of like meh. They would do like one of those. Oh, things. okay. Then it'll be that. So, so you're, like the, you're like you're like meh. You're like the emperor that's doing the fist pound with the thumb out. Like eh, I don't know if I want him to live or not. Make him crippled, but you know, let him live. Yeah, just yeah. Fuck, <laughs> fucking maim him, and then we'll exactly. call it a day. We'll yeah. try again later. Um, so so um, that's my opinion. I I, I uh, chose this alcohol, so obviously I've got, I gave it two thumbs up. Um, personally, I think like it being a little bit more chilled, it, it tastes better. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird thing. I fucking hate black licorice, dude. I fucking hate really? it. But, but you like Jaeger, but I love Jaeger. That it's is the a, wi- a strange w- fucking weird paradox, right? So this to me, um, and I'm, I'm in the same boat when it, when it comes to coffee as, as, as Tyler here, I, I do, especially, you know, shout out to those that smoke and have quit. Congratulations. Um, it's not easy. I know my man Ron here recently quit smoking. I just want to give you a big praise, dude. I know that's hard. It was hard. <laughs> I used to be a smoker. He only smokes pole now. <laughs> Fuck you. You got to switch to say, hey, it's an oral fixation. Leave him alone. It's fine. He'll live longer. <laughs> Smoke that pole. So anyways. He owes him <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> so anyways, I, um, yeah, when I was, when I used to smoke back in like 08, long time ago, Man, first thing in the morning, when I would get up, I used to be a truck driver. I'd get up, and I would head into work, and there was nothing like having a big glass of hot black coffee with a fucking cigarette. It was the perfect fucking thing. Yeah. It was the only fucking thing that I could that got me through my day. And so this kind of reminds me of that time. So I, 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 so I you, do, you ta- do I do, taste the coffee. I do taste the coffee. Yeah. It's like a, a coffee yeah. hint. It's not like a very strong coffee taste, but All right. I, I like it. I know it's going and diving into another whiskey, but there's another coffee whiskey out there called Jameson uh, Cold Brew, and that one to me has more of a coffee. Taste yes, than I will this. give you that. You, I can definitely taste the coffee I flavor can, more in that. Than I, like, this. I, yeah, I, but, I can mix that with my coffee. I, this, just but well, I'm going to throw it out there. Jägermeister is a very strong, distinct flavor. So right. it's it's sort of like whenever you mix anything with chocolate, you're definitely still going to taste the chocolate because chocolate's a very strong. It's very hard to wash it out. Right. So, you know, I could see that definitely with the Jaeger. 
So anyways, all right, so let's get into the film. Uh, so Split Second, this was one of those movies for those of you that are listening, ladies and gentlemen, that have not, you have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I'm going to say this flat out. Um, I got to interrupt here. I'm sure people do remember, uh, people in our, if you're in your 30s, uh, going into like a video rental store and looking at all the direct-to-video movies, this would be one of them. Yes. This was yes. not released yes. in the So, a uh, quick, fun little background story about me. My mother was obsessed with um, watching movies. That was like her thing, okay? So, uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember this, video stores, pretty much nationwide for the most part, would release the newest of, of, of movies that, they, that came to video on Tuesday mornings. So almost every other Tuesday, like my mom would take me out of fucking school, bro. Okay, and we would go, we'd go to Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. For those of you that are listening, that know or what that video is, Video World or Video. Yep, yeah. we would go and we would rent these movies. Well, there would be like three or four movies out of the ten movies that came out that were obvious, like came from the theaters, and then there were the movies that you've never fucking heard of, like you said, that just came straight to the shelf. This was one of those movies. And I will say that with, with me and my, my uh, what I remember, B-movies were hit and miss. It was either like really fucking, it was like a, a rare gem, which in my opinion, this is. I know that people might have a different opinion. I fucking loved this movie. But then there are those that are just total garbage. So with Split Second, uh, this came out in September of 1992. And it starred um, Rudger Hauer, may he rest in peace. The guy was fucking awesome. Ron, I know you've got a bunch of info oh, on man. him, so he's we're, we're going to go into that. But Great actor, great movies so, he's been in. So, spoiler alert, for those of you that haven't seen this, you're going to obviously you know, get spoiled from this, but it's I, I still recommend, if you haven't seen it, to go check it out. If you are into like a cheesy fucking sci-fi horror adventure from like the 90s, and it gives you that like that nostalgia of that time period, yeah. This is like uh, encapsulates that perfectly, and it's kind of a mix of like different movies. It kind of steals, yes. from, like it steals from Blade Runner. It steals yep. a little bit from, I, I guess I would say Total Recall. Would you so say it steals it's, a little it's, bit from it's that? It's got uh, like so I've heard well, people no more say the futuristic area. Blade Runner, Aliens, Predator, Robocop. It kind of has a little bit of it. It like I said, it very much encapsulates the nineties. Yes, like so. Um, Definitely Blade Runner. Definitely Blade Runner. Basically, the premise of the, of this movie is. There is this detective named um, Harley Stone, who's played by Rudger Hauer, and he had this this run-in with this thing, and it killed his partner, and now it didn't kill him, but he got maimed by it, basically, and now he has, like, a psychic connection to this thing, so he he knows when it's going to kill, and um, but he's always, like, one step behind, and the whole premise of this movie is he's trying to avenge you know, his partner's death and stop this thing from, you know, killing people, which it's, it's killing of choice is ripping people's hearts out and eating them, which you find out later on in the movie that by him doing this creature doing that, he kind of like consumes their souls sort of a thing. Yeah. So there's sort of a demonic creature aspect to this movie as well. And, and, um, the, and the design of this character was, oh, I do have to bring this up. The yeah. design of this character was from Stephen Norrington, if any of you all know who Stephen Norrington is. He is the director of the original Blade and the big flop League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes, which yes. I actually love that fucking movie. I, I, I do too. <laughs> hey, I'm, you're another one. I love that movie. Good. See, that's, there's so many movies that say flopped and they were really good. Anyway, so, yeah, yeah this movie, and he ends up getting, like, as as you can, as you just by listening to the fucking clips at the beginning, you know that he's a loose cannon. And, you know, we'll go into detail about it because I fucking love it. He's got the he's got the boss, the chief that fucking is always mad at him, but never fires him. And you know, there's always that one other officer that says you're a fucking nutcase and all this stuff. Which, by the way, you know the actor who portrays that. He's in a lot of movies. An Irish actor, yeah, he is. Usual Suspects. He's Tr- fucking great. Inception. Uh, shit. Uh, Jurassic Park: Lost World. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yep, he was, yep, yep, was, yep, the, he was uh, the hunter. Yeah, yes. the hunter and everything else. Yes, yes, yes. He's in a lot also, of movies. I, for some reason, I think he was in Dragonheart. He's in Dragonheart. He, he's in yeah. so many. He's a, he's a he's a lot. He's in a lot of movies. So this guy um, Harley gets a partner who's kind of like your more by the book, uh, more intellectual, not not really a rugged type. Uh, you know, named Dick Durkin, which is the greatest. Yes. It's such, it's such a porn it. name. I it love. Sounds it. Like Dur- uh, it sounds like Dirk. It sounds like Dirk Diggler from yeah. uh, Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights, yeah. Uh, the, so the actor's name is uh, Alistar Duncan. Yeah, and, and like that doesn't which even. He's been in a bunch of that, things. So. Honestly, that I've kind never of seen him in anything. Oh yeah. He's what been what, what are the movies? Call up his IMDb. You'll see. I'll have to look him he's up. Alistar. That sounds also like a porn name. So. 
In either case, um, and also there's a, a female element in the movie, and she plays his partner's... Kim Cattrall. Yeah, and I know that Ron's going to go into detail because he likes her. But oh, man, I had a crush on her. She No, okay, so I'm going to get into that too, but she's awesome. So she plays the, the ex... The ex partner's wife, who like is widowed, you know, because he dies. Yeah, and you know, Stone ends up sliding in there and ends up being with her, and there's a whole thing there too. So, anyways, um, this movie takes place in 2008. The, oh, look out! The election of Obama. Interesting. Yeah. So there's 40, according to the the the. There's like a um, what do you call it when they have like all the like a paragraph that describes shit at the beginning of the movie? Prologue. Prologue. There it is. Thank you. See, I'm I'm simple mind, simple mind. So the prologue talks about how there was 40 days and nights of rain, and due to global warming, we didn't listen, and oh, we pollute. <laughs> so all the um, roads are like completely covered in water. Right and there's there's water everywhere due to flooding, um, and um, it's it's perpetually almost always kind of like nighttime because there's so much smog and pollution in the air yeah. that it's dark. You know, so that's sort of the that's sort of the um, background of this movie, and it it. There's like you know, there's a lot of dark undertones. You rarely ever see like sunlight during this movie at all. You never know what fucking time it is, kind of a thing. Uh, but it's got a very gothic kind of dark feel to it. So did you know why? Like why they did that? Actually, no. Yeah, yeah. So like, so the whole like, um, you know, like it's almost be- like uh, so the the warnings ignored for decades like have now resulted in undreamed level of pollution where day has become almost endless night that was actually a sort of like a um a, a thing they kind of put into the into the plot because the only time they could film was at nighttime they filmed in like in this business district of London where like where there's really there's no housing there's no residential like addresses there it's all business so at night no one's there everyone goes home so like so they they uh, they filmed the movie uh. like in that business district whatever and they had to do it at night so, like, that just kind of gave, gave, like, the excuse behind it. You want to know something funny is that the atmosphere, production design, and cinematography of this film was a big influence on David Fincher. The reason why every, every single one of Fincher's movies is dark as fuck. Exactly. Like, like, <laughs> grungy and very grungy, too. So, so I'm, a, I'm a giant fan of this movie, but um, I'm going to say right now, intellectually, I'm probably going to get stumped here and there because I was, I'm limited on how much research I'm able to get done. But I will I, – one of the things I want to open up with, and I'll throw it out there for all, all of you guys to kind of comment on because, Ron, I know you're going to want to expand on this. Rudger Hauer, first of all, is fucking awesome. He's yes. a, he's a, he's a, a, a fantastic actor, okay? Um, he's been in a lot of movies, and he is – been in big movies and he's been in a lot of B movies, but I got to tell you that honestly, I feel like even when it's a B movie and it's not that good, there's a B movie he does called Cross Worlds, that's kind of out there, but it's good. Mm-hmm. But if he's in it, it's it's worth watching just to watch him. And and I wanted to kind of expand on what y'all's opinions were of him and of his character in this movie. The thing I love about his character is the fucking intensity. Um, the acting is is not bad from everyone else around him, but him in particular, the, the the intense moments in these movies really fucking sucked me in. I really loved watching him. I loved watching his reactions. I loved watching, like I could really feel from him that he was feeling what was going on. Um, there's a part in the movie, and I know that, um, Tyler, you'd given the opinion that you liked it, and I'll let you expand on this, but where whenever the... Thing, creature, whatever the fuck you want to call it, demon, is close. Because he has this psychic connection with it, he he hears it, its heartbeat. Yeah. And well, because uh, I think the creature, he what he does is whenever he kills somebody, he st- takes their heart and he gains their DNA. He gains right. their soul, basically. Right. So if you've been maimed by this thing but not killed, you have a connection. Yeah. So anytime this thing comes anywhere close, he knows because he hears its heartbeat. He doesn't know exactly where it is, but he knows it's close. Yeah. And... Whenever you hear that, that fucking, the, whoa, boom, 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 whoa, yep. boom, he gets this, like, this fucking tense, like he's on edge, and you can feel it coming off of him. It's yeah. Fucking great. So um, I'll pass it off to you, Ron, and you can, we'll come around the table, but I'm super curious to hear what you guys' opinions are on, on how he Howard. See, the thing is, he started in a lot of movies. He's from uh, Turkish uh, movies. From If you have anybody knows Paul Verhoeven, who's the director of RoboCop, Starship Troopers, um, uh, Total Recall. Uh, he did a movie called Turkish Delight with him, and then he also did an American movie. Um, actually, it was a European movie, but it was the first Amer- to be released in America called Flesh and Blood. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of that one. It's a really good movie, actually. Yeah, I suggest you see it. It's actually very entertaining. It actually stars, um, I can't believe I've forgotten her name. She's on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. The- Phoebe Cates? 
Uh, no, the other one, the uh, blonde, the, the younger one. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot her name. I, I should have known. But he's also he's a great actor in other points where he. You guys ever seen Hobo with a Shotgun? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Rick yes. Hall right there. He yeah, also he's he was also in, great in that. He's also in Batman Begins. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also cool. one of his most classic movies because it comes to one of my one of my all time favorite sci fi movies, Blade Runner. Yes, absolutely. I, I love his ending scene in Blade Runner. I, that speech I, is fucking amazing, breathtaking. It's beautiful great. scene. But I think he pulled the character really well. It kind of reminded me, seriously, of Blade Runner. I know that you. I don't know if you guys are going to be completely against this, but a little bit of Duke Nukem in a way. Yes, kind of. Said. Without the without like the big like stature I, I muscle figure. That, yeah. You, you, yeah. you agree with? Oh, good. I'm not I the only one in the dark. But you know Duke Nukem. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just he did have that very like overly macho. Yeah, baby. Like you can tell. <laughs> like looking at him, he looks like he probably weighs like what a buck sixty. Maybe he's not yeah. that very foreboding. But the way that he carries himself and yeah. the sh- shit they have him wear. He looks like he could whip your See, ass. That's what the things be a Blade Runner because he's wearing the big black trench coat. Yeah, and that's also funny with the whole sunglasses. His gun is almost like similar to the one in, in Blade Runner. Yeah, so they do really try to copy Blade Runner in that way. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Tyler? So yeah, dude. So like, so this movie must have been an absolute shit show. Uh, well, like you know, as far as like the uh, the making of it goes, because like you can tell from you can tell there's a lot of like of scenes that, like that should have been done like with like a second take or something like that. And they're, they're, <laughs> oh like, yeah, they're, like, yeah. They're, like, all right, and yeah, action. So fucking Lily. Cut. <laughs> they're like, I really want to hear your opinion about like, this. Next I, scene, I, I they would... go, ah, fuck it, keep it. Yeah. Next scene. <laughs> <laughs> next scene. Move it on. That's a wrap. <laughs> hey, come on. You, you gotta admit this. We're is one on of, a this, timetable, people. <laughs> this is one of those movies that is. It's so just, bad. It's just it's fun. Good. It's fun. It's not like I am not going to disrespect Tyler's turn by inter- interjecting my opinion right now. Let's listen to what Tyler. Tyler, has go, ahead. go ahead, Tyler. So yeah, no, it's just it's just that like there's so many scenes where like where like they obviously could have just done a second take and cleaned it up and they just fucking didn't. Um, there's <laughs> oh one, yeah yeah. yeah right. There's one scene where like where Harley where Harley Stone like he like grabs a dude. I think it was the like the 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 guy who works in the department. Um, what was the actor's name? He was the guy from like from Lost World. Uh, Pete yeah. pa- Pete, uh, Pete Pulsawaiter. Pete Pulse, what was the uh, or something like that? Yeah. Um, he grabs him, whatever, and it just like it just like looks really fucking clumsy. Like I, I want, I want that scene in Predator, like when uh, when Arnold grabs uh, grabs Carl Weathers Dutch. Sorry. Dutch Dutch, gra- Dutch grabs Dylan and he's like, you know, you set us up and like and throws him against the wall and everything. Yeah, yeah he throws him against the wall. It just like it, it, you you. You almost like swear that Carl Weathers' feet left the fucking earth. Yeah, like, you know when he grabs him, like it just—it's you know—he grabs him perfectly or whatever. You absolutely buy that, like that, like that. He he took away his free will for a moment. Yeah, and like and with with this movie, every single scene like that is like is very very clumsy. There's like there's one scene I think it's at the very very beginning um, when he's in the club. He goes to hang up a phone and like actually misses the fucking hook and has <laughs> yes. to do it again. <laughs> oh and man, it's just like come on, dude. We could have done. <laughs> One more take of that. Um, another one that pissed me off <laughs> is like is that it's tour. It's like it's at the very end of the movie when uh, Michelle uh, Kim Control Kim Control's character like uh, hits like that that cage that that covers the breaker. Yeah. Um and she she breaks it out of the way. She like she does like this little smile that she's all proud of. And Durkin says yeah and like and looks at the fucking camera yes. <laughs> no, so the thing i didn't yeah. uh, uh, remember the i know i'm going all the way to the end when the whole part when uh, Kim control <laughs> is hanging yeah and she, the, the guy tells her to swing she's just swing and she's just like looking dumbfounded not knowing what to do i, I couldn't figure that shit swing out is a head. hard concept okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah well because he even says he's like yeah like swing your legs and she's like oh okay yeah yeah, well, yeah but she she didn't know what she was like it, it didn't look right in that scene. I don't know for some reason. Yeah, because most people would know. Like if you say swing, they, they you know what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. Oh, was, oh, swing my legs. Duh. No, no, no. I want you to swing your head. Like what the fuck are you talking like, about? Want you to stupid. swing dance while you're hanging there? <laughs> 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 but so uh, Rudger Hauer's character. Like, what did you? What did? What was your? What's your take on on him and and just his acting in general? So uh, so I mean, the dude's obviously like a, a great actor. Like or, or was I should say. Um, he was like he was a great actor. Uh, pretty much everybody that like that seems to have worked with him says that. But there's there's obviously like there was a there was a problem with like with scheduling here. Uh, word is is like that he was only available for like 21 days, yeah. and so the entire production was incredibly rushed. Apparently he was, he was like he was very very uncooperative during the production, mm. um, and that compounded with some other things that apparently had happened. 
that is what led to the original director quitting. Oh, yeah, that's right. So for those of you listening, um, this is something that Tyler looked up, and, and uh, I, I actually uh, – I, I will admit I watched a few different like YouTube videos and read you know because some people did actually cover this movie I was I was shocked um, about what three quarters of the way through the director was fucking like I'm done and he left and they had to bring a different director in and there was a lot of like rewrites re scenes done and it was very kind of choppy and you know so well, the movie was only shot in eight weeks and the pre production for this movie lasted only three weeks. Yeah, you can fucking tell. That, well, that and here's takes a lot longer than that. So and here's the thing that I will say about that is that you know, obviously, this movie not only was it low budget and it was it was hastily done, it was not done well, but also um, critics fucking shit all over it. But reminds me of Ed Wood. It still became a cult classic. Like people fucking love this movie. There's a lot of people that, again, if you're looking for that that campy, cheesy '90s kind of a movie. That's just fun. You're not necessarily trying to like, you know, watch something that's going to blow your mind. It's a good film. So, but, and it makes sense about what you're saying with Rodger Hauer because he was definitely the star power of the movie. I think, I, I, in and my so opinion, I, I think he was the best part of the movie. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The, the movie has a lot of flaws, a lot of flaws. I, oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie there, but Rodger Hauer. He's an established actor, and I thought that he made it pretty entertaining. I liked his character. Yeah, he, I, I he actually didn't mind. I was start the Dirk Duggan. Dirk, what's how do you say his name? Dirk Duggan. Dick, Dick, Dick Durkin. Dick Durkin. Dick Durkin. Durkin. That's right. Dick Durkin. I didn't mind his character. I kind of liked how he was fleshed out. Like in the beginning, he was just kind of like this quirky guy, and I know it. And you know, it's, especially where he, he gets laid every night, apparently. And um, he uh, should have been the fucking star of the goddamn film. All right, he had <laughs> well, a massive he, he had background, more. Yeah. you know, massive training and stuff like that. And obviously, he's fucking getting laid on the reg. Yeah, all right. So every he every night, apparently, been the too. goddamn center of this fucking movie, not Ruger Hauer. I'm sorry. I, I actually really liked his character too. We'll get we'll get into that. In a yeah, second. sorry. We'll about talk that. about it. But um, but yeah. So Tyler, do you have anything else? No, no, actually, um, I, I completely agree with Stu on that. Like, that, that um, Durkin's character was definitely a lot more fleshed out. It definitely, he under, like, you understood him. He made more sense. Uh, with, with Stone, there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of missing history there. Like, you yeah. know, like, why did he become the way that he is? Like, well, his partner got killed. Like, mm, no, there's a lot more to that guy than just that. You know, like, the, the whole thing, like, with, like, the motorcycles. Like, you know, like, he likes motorcycles just because his name's Harley. Like, that's kind of thin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, got yeah, a point yeah. there. Yeah, and, like, and w- like with, with Durkin, you kind of see, like, this arc happen. Like, you know, like, he's, like, this really, like, bookworm, kind of, like, kind of nerdy guy. You know, like that, you know, like you said, man, like, you know, like, he like he fucks his wife every night and runs five miles every day, whatever. Like, that's yep. an impressive human being. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think it's a completely real human being, but it's pretty fucking well, impressive. You, as it, as it remember is, the part where he, shit. remember he got carved all up with a map on his chest and he, he was like, oh, what happened? I'm bleeding. But he didn't, he didn't even like cry in pain like that. He's like, he just put a mirror yeah. to it and he was just going along and, with it. And we'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, like I was even, even with me, I was like. That would fucking hurt. And he's just sitting there like, oh, look, I'm maimed for life. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> like, no, dude. But yeah, so, okay. Stu. What? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, listen. You Before can you hear his opinion, <laughs> no, <haven't> you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Stu is, if I've ever seen a human being boil, I, I'm watching it now. So, Stu, oh, my God. not the whole film, because I know that it's nope. a shit show, but just Rutger Hauer, his acting, his character, go. No, oh, this is the epitome of a paycheck film. Okay, <laughs> plain and fucking simple. Yeah. All right, <laughs> nobody gave a flying fuck about <laughs> any sort of quality, any sort of fucking story. This was bullshit from start to fucking finish. Wow. They threw in every fucking goddamn cliche they fucking could. And this is something I appreciate B movies. I do. But this is bullshit. Really? This was a waste See, no, of celluloid. See, I, 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 it should have never I, I, been made. No, no. All right, it was a waste of my time. I am pissed off. <laughs> the only reason I fucking finished it is because of this goddamn show right here. So, right. ladies and gentlemen, he has yet to even mention Rucker Howard, but that's fine. Go right ahead. Okay, but it, he was literally only playing roles that he's played before with what? the intensity. Okay, and, okay. And, I understand that. I understand that, but it's a patient. <laughs> Hold the fuck on. All right. I've been waiting patiently to no, get and this I hear this. out of my I, system. I really want to hear this. Go All right. He was... The entire time they were even trying to set it up as if there's going to be uh, multiple fucking movies of this fucking goddamn duo that nobody gave a 
fuck about at the end. <laughs> well, well, this is one adventure of Harley and Detective Dick Dargler. Uh, like, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Give me back my goddamn 90 minutes. Right. Fuck you. Yeah, uh, yes. That, that is true. They did try to put a yes. sequel to it. And, they, and then even the pumps at the end, the fucking bubbles coming up at the end. Oh, is he really dead? Huh? Fuck you. No, Maybe. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. You're like, fuck no, you. It's over. It's over. Don't make any more of these. <laughs> well, oh, I, I love it. So it's two thumbs down for you. I can yes. Tell you. So, <laughs> it's, so, it's two thumbs down <laughs> and a ball set down. All right? I fucking hated it. Ah, this oh is, my well, that's god! That's just one man's opinion. I'm loving it. So um, I'm just gonna because um, this is something, and I'm not staking claim to this. Tyler's the one that found this information, but if Tyler, if you don't mind, I'll throw it out there about the the girl in the scene with the don't watch me and like pee, blah blah blah. That one. That was a weird scene. So yeah, she the was, whole movie was a weird scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. there, there were no, 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 don't get them started. Don't get them started. It's okay. So Tyler found this information out. The first girl that gets killed, the one that she says, um, you know, I, I'm going to pee, don't, you know, don't be a creep and don't watch. Don't be a creep and watch. Very kind of cute. Not really great acting, but sexy little scene there. Um, she was actually, um, let's see here, you put, she was on the album cover for a death metal band called Aborted. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The album was called The the Purity of Perversion. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a literally a screenshot from the movie. Like it's her, it's her, like you know, like sprawled across the bathroom floor, like where the chest ripped open, and it says like aborted. <laughs> purity really? of perversion. That's what the movie should have been. Oh my god. <laughs> so you okay. really hate this. So let, movie? <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm loving this. So no, I'm, let's <laughs> let's get uh, one of the things I want to do too is while we're we're kind of loosely on the subject is to talk about the partner. So. His partner, uh, Detective up, Dick Durkin, three Ds. We, we need fucking. We need big guns. So, I will say this: that I, you know, I, I, I liked this character. Um, yes. One of the things that I loved about him was his uh, his transformation and watching that that um, natural progression and that um, that bond that forms between him and Harley. I yeah. love it. I really did. I thought it was great because he starts as this straight laced guy. Harley's like, fuck this pencil neck piece of shit. I don't want to deal with him. You know, but you know, through their own experiences, like, you know, um, Dirk ends up getting maimed by this this creature as well. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about that by the way, because there's a couple of scenes that involve guns and stuff, and with like my background of training on that, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But <laughs> and Stu will agree with that as well. But anyway, so um, yeah, hit, watching the watching his transformation, where like this relationship forms between the two of them, and they actually start bonding, and, yeah. and like there's even that that wonderful fucking scene, in my opinion, where the chief is like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And like Dirk starts going off about uh, the upside down <laughs> sim- the upside oh, down no, no, triangle is no. a symbol of Walter, and he's like, "He's fucking talking like <laughs> you." <laughs> now. Like, yeah, I thought that was fucking. Oh great. yeah, and then he starts going down the hallway. Says, "I guess uh, with the chief's reaction to." <laughs> Is how I felt the entire fucking movie. Oh my god! <laughs> what <in> exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, let's make this a fucking important now. All of a sudden, all right, let's mix goddamn Chinese mythology, fucking Christian mythology, fucking Incan mythology. Let's mix them all together. And oh, by the way, see fucking end at age because of climate change. Fuck you. Pick a goddamn theme and stick with it. We're we're throwing it all in there. Yeah. It's, and it's by, by the way, the, the actor that who does that, who's the chief, is called Alan Armstrong. The movies that you'd probably notice him in are like in the Mummy Returns. Uh, he's in yes. Oh, what other movies has he been? I'm trying. There's he's there's been, been a, a lot. lot. Yeah, it's just there's a lot of movies he's been. The in. whole movie was made up of people you recognize, but, but you can't pick out but, of a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the entire they're, cast. They're, they're yeah. Almost the whole cast, with the exception of Roger Howard, are all people are like. I've seen this person in a few other movies, and I can't really place them, but they're fucking there. Yeah, right. they're, all char- yeah. they're all character actors. Yes. yes, and so... Well, Kim Control. Kim yeah, except for a, Kim Control. She's yes. in a lot of movies, and that's that's the thing. Can I bring that up? Yeah, you know what? Let's Instead of talking about like Dirk, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about her. Kim go Control. Well, first of all, the little, this little thing about Kim Control... She's been in a lot of movies. One of her first movies is Porky's, if anybody's ever seen the original sex comedy about the chick who gets turned on when she goes into a locker room because she's the smell of the locker room gets her horny. And she's also been in Police Academy. She's been in the 80s favorite Mannequin. I don't know if any of y'all seen that. Yes, I have. It's um, cheesy as fuck. <laughs> and also with her hairdo that's in this movie, which I remember you telling me that you could I, not stand. I don't know what it is, man, but that hairdo, I have yet to find a female that it's attractive on. I fucking can't stand it. But I will say this. 
Her character was since we're talking about her. Her character is very. Um, I didn't understand her character. To well, the truth. no, but her character is very somber and very like ugh, almost the whole movie for the most part, or she's in danger. But that scene, the one that you said where she hits the 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 thing to the, and she kind of has that little smile and everything else. Yeah, that and in that moment, she became very attractive to me, like very very sexy because she was like. She was lightening up. She was yeah. smiling. She was actually being happy for a fucking second. And so then I didn't mind the hairdo so much. But that hairdo... I, I thought I it was... You, you know, believe it or not. I thought it was... I thought it was... Yeah, that's what Zach yes. was about to say. But it it's did. not. It, it didn't, didn't even look... But then we saw it for but real yeah, hair. No. Was that the, was remember, really Remember her start... She was in Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered yeah. Country. She had almost the, the exact same the, hair. Well, it was filmed a year afterwards. So yes. it was the exact same hair. But it's... Looked so I, fake. See, yeah, I, I thought the exact same thing, but then when you saw her in the shower with her little shower sex scene, she her tits. She, was, she shows her tits her in a lot was, of movies. Her hair was wet. It and looked. It, it, yeah, it didn't look like hair. a wigs, but and also it's like shaved right near the. It just it, it was ugly. I, I didn't I hate like. Those well, you know, and you notice too that like a lot, um, like even that I don't even know if it was a guy or a gal, but the whatever the fuck the thing was behind the bar that had like the hair like in the front and then a shaved head in the back. I thought that was a dude. It yeah, was a dude. I don't even fucking. No, guy it is a dude. Yeah. In fact, um, the actor. If you know the you, you know the fucking actor. For of that Christ's sake, Ron. Like, okay. the bar. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, I have that, a whole. That's cast. my favorite no, one. Inside, no, inside the credits of the movie, um, when I was watching it, it, it. Oh my god, I gotta look it up. Just go ahead and keep talking. I'll bring it so, up. So uh, was it? That's they labeled him as bartender of, with a bad fucking yeah. haircut because it was terrible. So. Yeah, like I've noticed a lot of the haircuts and hairstyles in this movie, um, especially with the females, was very like gothy, very like aggressive, like, mm-hmm. oh, this part of my head's shaved, and then this part of my hair's long, and blah, you know, like that kind of a thing. So, um, but no, I, I liked her character. I thought that she was very somber a lot, of, a lot of the time, and there was a few lines that she said that were not believable as a, as, as a human being. Like when she was like, no, King Kong. Like I was like... What? There was this long pause, and I and this uh, Tyler. I don't know if you know this right. or not, but this is there's like a long pause where almost it's like she for like couldn't remember her line, but they just kept filming, and then all of a sudden it popped in her head, and she said her line. So they're like, ah, fuck it. She said the line. We'll keep it. So well, you, you want to know who the uh, name of the actor is for the uh, scene that looks like a dude? I'm Tasty dying. Tim. Tasty Tim. I'm dead serious. That's what it is on the IMDb. Tasty Tim. I can sleep well at night now. Okay. <laughs> Besides, uh, the, that's the, the actor's name, not the, oh, not the, not the, not besides the, the character. character. The only other character I enjoyed in the entire film was Ratcatcher. Yes, <laughs> okay. Only he other made, like, character cameo. I enjoyed. He's yes. in a lot of movies yes, he too. Is. I love him. <laughs> he's in Sleepaway Camp Three. He's in. Um, He's in, he's in a lot of fucking. He also movies. plays House the of a Thousand exact Corpses. same character in every film that he's in, just under a different name. <laughs> yeah, all, right? all dizzy am, and weird. Yes, I, but I love him. Anytime I see him on the screen, it makes me ha- smile. He, like, is he, he like a comedian? Is he a comedian? I don't fucking know, but I would I would watch him just sitting around yelling at people yeah. for forever. <laughs> What so, do you think, Tyler? Tyler, yeah, no, yeah. no. I really like that dude in Scrooge. He was really cool. Mm-hmm. The Rat Catcher, Rat King, whatever the fuck his name was. Like, yeah. <laughs> rat so, King. Tyler, I was also going to ask you, with, this, awesome. with the, main, the main trio of um, Kim Cattrall, I know you, you kind of touched on Rudger Hauer, and then the other actor, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Alistair Alistair. The, I'm Alistair. just going to call him the fucking porn star, because he has a fucking porn star name no matter what he does. What, what was your take on those Alistair two characters? Duncan, Duncan. Duncan and, and Kim Cattrall. He was in... Uh, Girl Dragon Tattoo also. Just going back to another Fencer film. Yeah. He was Greg. Oh! Wow. I, yep. Good good catch. I did not know that. So yeah, what's okay. what's the question, man? Like, who was, like, the better actor? Like, or no, no, the no. better what, character? Yeah, I just want your opinion on the character, the, the acting and the character as far as the female and the partner go. Yeah, man. So, like, so I already talked about how Rudger Hauer, I felt like, you know, he could have done better. Um, I think... His heart wasn't in the job, uh, you know. Like Stu said, like you know, this this movie was a fucking paycheck for him. I believe that. Like you know, like yeah. he he had the opportunity to shine, and like and it really didn't come through as much. Like you know, he I felt like he had a lot more potential, and just it just fell fell short. Yeah. Um. Uh, I did like Alistair Duncan as like as as Durkin. I I feel like he's like he's the better character like of the movie. Um, I felt like Kim Cattrall was a piece of wood. Like she was a very, very wooden, wooden actor. Like, you know, just, I mean, like, I just like, like, I get that she was like, she was sad and she was a widow or whatever, but like, but I mean, but she was also like a, an adulterer. Like, I think no, she was pointless. Yep, to be, she I think was she was kind of, around her husband before he died. She was kind of pointless in the movie, in my opinion. That's, she didn't need to be. Or at least the, the way that the, I don't know, like my thing is it, it would have been a little bit better if like the, the, the partner died or whatever and 
you know, she's sad, she's got nobody, and then, you know, Rudger Hare's character and her got together. That would have that would have been a little bit better, but the fact that shit was going on before, yeah, kind of kind of puts a stain on that relationship a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then, like, whenever they're being intimate together, or whenever they're having a touching moment, in the very back of your brain, you're like, yeah, but that bitch cheated on. Her husband with this fucking guy yeah. before he fucking died. Well, I mean, when she was taking a shower, the Rupert Hart character, what is his name? The the, the name? Harley Stone. Harley. Harley, that's right. Stowe. When he walks into the shower, she's just like, I'm taking a shower. And, you know, he, she didn't even like. Get- no, and there's, so I was watching this. There's this one particular guy um, I, here in a minute, actually. I'll look him up because I feel like giving him a shout out would be the right thing to do. But I loved his fucking. He basically goes over movies like this. And kind of goes, um, kind of does like a synopsis and explains the movie. But he's he's fucking hilarious. And he was talking about uh, this movie. And one of the things that he said that I thought was hilarious is how he, <laughs> he comments on how there's a scene where they're going into the apartment building. And all of a sudden they hear this blood-curdling scream. And they go running upstairs. And same thing. He comes in on her. She's in the shower. And she's like... She's like, you know, uh, and she slaps him, and he's like, I heard she a looks scream. All smart and she's and laughing, she, too, yeah, about she, it. Yeah, she slaps him, and he's like, uh, oh, it's all right. oh, I heard a scream. And he's like, she goes, yeah, the water was cold. And the guy that does the comment on YouTube, he's like, what dumb bitch fucking screams like that when the water gets cold? You're retarded. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. You, you, you're startled for a second. You don't scream like someone's stabbing you in the chest. Like, you're retarded. And, and that's the scene also where she got bit by the uh, creature, right? Which well, I, no, no, no. That was, um, well, later. later. That comes later. Yeah, yeah, that comes later. I was rooting for the creature. <laughs> <laughs> I really was. <laughs> I love your opinion about this movie. I didn't want her to be psychic the way Ruger Hauer's character was. I did not want her to fucking be psychic and have that bond. What did y'all? What did y'all think of the uh, the gun scene when they're um, all going inside the um, talking to that? uh, What is the guy that holds all the guns? The armor. The armor. Yeah. Oh, that was. It was very. It was very '90s cheesy, but it was fucking hilarious and entertaining. I loved it. I loved it. I I thought it was great. It was was entertaining. Any loadout scene, like in a movie, like is amazing. Like you know, like you had that, like in Commando. Take out a jungle with this. If you you had that in Commando, you had that in Terminator Two. Like you know, like like the scene like where they get all the guns and like all the gear and shit. Aliens also in Sigourney Weaver. So they're they're ready to go to fucking war. Like every that's like you know we talked earlier about like this movie having a shit ton of cliches in it. If it's done right, it can be awesome. But like here's my biggest problem with that scene. It was done way too early. Yeah. It, it completely, like, the pacing of the movie. So, like, so when they were doing, like, the loadout, you're kind of amping up. You're like, fuck yeah, let's go kill this thing or whatever. And then they, they go back to his apartment and they take a nap. <laughs> and then the rest of the movie, they're just carrying around those fucking automatic shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking for reasons to use it. Like, when Detective Dick uh, freaking, you know, unloads goddamn probably a hundred fucking rounds of shotguns to kill a fucking rat. Let's get, All right. Let's get these guns. You're talking, about the, one, you're talking about the one inside the kitchen when they yeah, get shot right. the kitchen? Yeah. So like, you shot up my kitchen. <laughs> and he like, just picks up, like, what, you're trying to shoot this? <laughs> the rat's all the pieces. So, um, what was I going to say? I will say this. Chauvinistic uh, alert for anyone that's listening that gets fucking overly sensitive about shit. You are not a man if you don't get a fucking boner when you see scenes where people are like, Matrix shout out, we're going to need guns, lots of guns. And then fucking, there's a wall of guns. Any man that sees a wall of fucking guns and doesn't get fucking excited and hard, I, you're I, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Like that, you know, so any scene where you have that in it, it's hard to fuck it up. But I will agree with you. The timing on that scene was all wrong. Uh, that shouldn't have been there. So I um, thought Detective Dick did a wonderful job, though, going through his own little psychological break. You know, yeah. need bigger guns, need bigger, need bigger guns. Yeah, he, I, I thought he did a great job of just portraying that that insanity that he was going through. Right. <laughs> that, that, that's what that scene right there. Is what made me actually really start to root for him uh, well, more than anybody else. I was like, "All right, you saw about Star Duncan, yeah." Well, and you, you really liked his character. It, well, I had to try to find somebody to root for in this. You're movie. Like, I'm looking for so something. I am, positive. I am latching on to this motherfucker right here. So the this only likable person in the this. Film. The, yeah, I think that the turning point where he fucking snaps because now he's got a psychological connection to this thing. He doesn't understand it. He finally lays on. He's on it for the first time, and he's like, "What the fuck is this thing?" Yeah. That that snap where now he's kind of at he's kind of at Harley's level, and you get to watch that progression of him becoming a fucking nutcase is great. 
and where he's like walking around in the, the 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 gun room and he's like it's too fucking small and he's got a fucking cigar in his yes. mouth and he's like oh, I'm hungry I need something and Holly's like here have some chocolate and he's like rah, 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 rah. And he just like turns into him it was fucking great. I do love how his character just like kind of <laughs> develops and just changes over and yeah just, it, it changes over to the same character that Harley is basically so one so. scene that kind of threw me is uh, I want to say it's Harley's first time in the police station where he goes up to that coffee machine. All right, and they show him putting a bunch of sugar into right. the cup, and right. then hot water. Yeah, they there's no show color. Him putting any fucking coffee? No, 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 at all. There's and no color. Sugar and hot water. I'm like, and it's like, wow, this is my coffee. I'm like, this ain't, I'm this like, ain't fucking coffee. How the fuck did it turn? It just shows how cheap this movie was. Hot sugar water. So it looks so um, dirty when he makes it too. I'm like, yeah, oh. You're like, are you gonna fucking drink? No, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a scene where he's in his apartment. And, like, he wakes up or something. I forget. I, I can't remember. You're like, I'm a big fan of this movie. I don't fucking don't even know it really well. He goes to take us. He, he goes into his sink. A uh, sink full of fucking dirty, disgusting, like, filthy fucking dishes. Picks up a cup that just happens to be upright with coffee in it. Oh, yeah. And I there's a fucking the cigarette butt in it. And he's just like, Mah. and he, he just, just drinks fucking it. drinks and it. And then he, I remember, because that's also the same scene where he wakes up inside his apartment with a fucking dub on his head or a pigeon Yeah, on and his then head. he grabs, you notice he grabs a grill brush. And he's like, Meh. and he <laughs> to try, his what is he trying it? to do? Like clean like bird shit out of his I, hair? I don't fucking I, know. I couldn't man. figure that part out right there. So it was one of those tough guy cliches. So I was Tyler, gonna... I'm seeing I'm seeing you nod. I, you, what what do you got? No, it's just like I, like there's so much there's so much like trying to make this guy like you know like this like the super tough guy or whatever like like he was a disgusting hoarder. Is what he fucking <laughs> yeah. <does. laughs> yes. yeah, and like his uh, that one scene where his partner's like. He's sitting on the fucking motorcycle, and he's, like, looking around his apartment, like, this place is amazing. Yeah, and he's like, like no. <laughs> yeah, the word you're looking for is condemned, bro. <laughs> his apartment's disgusting. Like, there's nowhere to sit. There's probably urine on everything. Okay, it's there, fucking gross. There's a deleted scene with him, because uh, the, apparently the... Uh, the they dirt, had scenes that they thought were not good enough to make it into this movie. <laughs> there's, there's, a Japan, <laughs> there's a Japanese cut. Seriously, was, there's a scene with him and his wife. <laughs> the, the guy with his wife that he has sex with every night, apparently. And uh, his, uh, have you seen it? No. Have you seen the deleted scene? Oh, is man. His wife that attractive? hasn't been so bad of a scene. That, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's got to be work. really bad if they no, 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 You've no, seen no, it, right? No. Tyler, you the watched it? Boom, Mike must have been fucking hanging in the fucking scene or some shit like that. <laughs> Did I leave a lens cap on or something? What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> All right, so it actually gets worse. So, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so apparently they cut this scene out. Uh, so they, they actually credited the actress at the beginning of the movie. And then they cut her out. Her name's like Roberta, Roberta Eaton. So like you'll see like introducing Roberta, Roberta Eaton at the beginning of the movie or whatever. She's, she's never even, in, she's the not movie. in the fucking movie. <laughs> that's fucking great. That is that's bad. So um, one of the things I wanted to also touch on and get into discussion because Tyler, I know you have a lot of opinions on this too. Is the monster the antagonist of the film? Now, my opinion. Uh, first of all, yes, it very much mimics uh, Venom. Let's get that out there right now. Venom came out about a few years prior to this movie, so it it it's it's kind of painfully obvious. And there's a lot of similarities. So, um, personally, my opinion, I think they shouldn't have shown the monster on the on the the the, the movie poster or the box at all. I think that if they hadn't done that. Even with some of the scenes that I know that you guys are going to get into where it's like it's obvious special effects at its finest yeah. with this fucking creature, um, it oh would have been – it would have – he's, he's dying. I know. You're, we're going to get to you. Don't worry. He's got so but much there's, to say. There's, um, <laughs> oh. This creature would have been that much more foreboding and scary and mysterious had they not put him on the fucking box. Like – you should have done that. Now, I will say having said that, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – in a second, I'm going to hand the floor to you guys because I know you're going to pick apart a lot of different scenes. Well, I, I got I to gotta say this. Yeah. I have to say this. You want to know who was actually considered for the role of Rupert Hauer's character, Harley? Who? Harrison Ford. That I, well, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, they, they were trying to fucking make Blade Runner 2. Yeah, yeah like, that's really exactly were. They yeah. really were. So um, I will say that with this monster, I had a lot of issues with the inconsistencies. And what I mean by that is like, there are scenes where you see him. He's fucking go, running through steel. He is incredibly fast. He's incredibly powerful. And then you'll have a scene where, like, Rudger Hauer literally gut checks him with an elbow, and that's enough to fucking make him go, and go back, you know? Yeah, and then he, he's that. able to kind of, like, trot away from the monster. This monster that's, like, so fast that you can't track him long enough to shoot him. He runs through a fucking steel door. 
And yet, like, the way – whenever they show a close encounter, like an actual physical touch encounter with this monster, it's very awkward, very not foreboding at all. Now, I will say the one scene that I do like with this monster where there is a physical contact that I thought was really fucking good, you guys might disagree, is fine. Is the ending? Is closer to the end when he looks into this dark space of that, that – um, uh, Rail car? Rail car. Yeah. And he doesn't see anything, which I'm like – Okay, dumbass. The thing's like all black. You're not going to see it. He should have known that. And he's, right. and I'm kind of curious as to why the fuck he didn't hear its heartbeat when he was standing not even a foot from it in that scene. But anyways, he turns his back, and this fucking claw comes down his face and starts to kind of like like protrude. A, like that scene and the music and the feel of it, I personally thought was fucking cool. I liked it. That's the only part, honestly, where, like, the encounter the monster where I thought that was really, it was really well done. I liked it. Yeah. Other than that, it was very awkward, man. And, you know, it was very kind of, they could have done so much better. And, again, they should not have put him on the fucking poster. Well, what do you expect? It's a direct video movie. It's yeah, not going to, yeah. it's not going to have all the good special. Yeah. But, but, I mean, there, I'm going to say this. It's going way off subject. There's a lot of, most direct video movies are really cheap budget. They're very rushed. They're, 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 they're non, they're not known directors. There's very handful of direct video movies that are actually good. Uh, speaking mm-hmm. of Tremors 2, Aftershocks, that's one of my favorites. I don't know if y'all yeah. seen that one. Yeah. That's a good direct video movie, but most direct video movies are crap. That'd they're the movies good, that aren't even they're, are so shitty that they're not good enough to be in the theater. That'd so. be a, a good a good podcast in the future is for fucking Tremors. But oh, that, that's I'm, a great one. So I'm su- <laughs> the two negative Nancys here. I'm super curious as to what you guys think about the monster in this movie. I I don't <laughs> no 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 Helena, yeah Helena. I know I want to hear go Tyler. ahead Tyler. All right. So, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> like, seriously, no, it's like it's it's fucking predator and fucking venom and yeah, know, ex- exactly, dude. Like this thing is this alien. Thing, this thing is so confused. It's like, this thing's so fucking confused. Whatever, it's like a fucking tranny. Like, from like <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's a good. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Uh, so at first, Durkin thinks that like, it's some sort of cult centered around the astrological sign, like the Scorpio. That it's it's not human. All we know about this thing is that it's not a vegetarian. Like, it eats hearts, uh, it acquires its DNA from its victims, and seems to have a like, psychic link with its survivors or whatever. Like, which, okay, that was a cool part. Like, you know, uh, Stone gets gets cut. Uh, Durkin gets, like, the symbol, cr- like, uh, on his chest. Like, you know, uh, Stone can hear the heartbeat. Yeah. Like, uh, Durkin's uh, symbol on his chest burns, like, when the thing's nearby, whatever. Like, okay, that's a cool thing. Um, I will give the cr- I will give credit to where, as far as building up tension, when, like, when the monster's nearby, like, they did that fairly well. When the, like, when you hear the heartbeat, like, you know it's close, whatever. Like, that's a good tension device, just like right. an aliens with the, um, uh, with the proximity, um, uh, monitor detector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, proximity yeah. detector. Yeah. Um, that was a good way to build, to build tension, like the burning in his chest, whatever, the exact, the exact same way. Um, that was cool. But, like, but beyond that, like, it has, like, a psychic link with the survivors, or whatever, like, it's a werewolf or a vampire. Um, it, it was this movie came out three years after Venom. Like again, clear, clear, obvious, like fucking like uh, similarities, whatever. You literally put white eyes or white like fucking markings on its face or whatever, and it's fucking Venom. Yeah, and said so they did like makeshift sunglasses. I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's, it's got, yeah. It, it looks like, like a macho it looked, it looked man, like Randy goggles. Savage fucking visor on its face. <laughs> it, what it, the fuck was like that? Go- I thought it was like a I mask or something. Was, it was more <laughs> like an alien RoboCop hybrid. <laughs> Xenomorph like yeah. RoboCop. Like, yeah. Yeah. One without like without the exoskeleton, like a smooth, weird hybrid. I, you know what? You I, had the visor of RoboCop, you know, going on. You had the, the mouth of alien, except for the, the second little uh, mouth. Well, the, the thing I didn't um, care. It just felt very, they, they tried to pick out anything that they thought was yeah. cool looking on anything that came out before and make it into one rubber suit and it didn't work out too well. And to go on your fucking scene, uh, Lenny, about uh, the claw coming down. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like, I, I, I'm coming down. I just want your sunglasses. That's all I want. Uh, no, why did he just crush the motherfucker's head when he had the fucking chance? Because it's his, okay, I will no. tell you why. I will tell you why. Well, why was he so it. connected Hold to him on. in the first place? Like, why will, did he want to follow, why did he, I mean, what was him following him I in will the first ex- place? I will expand on this scene a little bit. And, there, and, and I'm probably way off. Um, as Stu has pointed out, but this is my, <laughs> I just bought your sunglasses. That's fucking great. So that, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. I, I thought about that too. I actually did. I was like, hold on. 
why didn't this beast just very quickly, methodically fucking terminate Stone? Yeah. This is what I honestly believe is the opinion. This beast is not just a beast. It has it has intellectual thought. Case in point, you know, it sends shit to him. It writes messages. It has intellect. It's smart. I honestly think that the reason why he so very intimately and slowly fucking came down his face, removed the glasses, and then came back down and started, started feeling around where his heart was and all this and was taking his time was because he was he was relishing in this moment because the moment had finally come where the two of them were coming together. He This guy had been hunting him, and he'd been toying with him for God knows how long, and now finally they have that fucking intimate moment where here it is. We are right here, and we are with each other. There's nothing that's going to come in between us. We're right here. And he was, I think he was, t- he was relishing that moment. He was taking his time because he really wanted to fucking feel it when he finally ripped his fucking heart out, and that's the end of it. Yeah. But, you know, Rudiger Howard, because he's superhuman, apparently, and just gives him a little elbow check. Yep. Then the monster's <laughs> like, ah, and he backs away. Uh, I'm a- <laughs> and then he, like, very awkwardly, like, starts to come towards him with his arms and swipes at him, and then all of a sudden, you know, <gasps> Dirk, the, t- the timing in this movie for everything is fucking spot on because Dirk just goes look out bah, 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 bah. they're shooting him with this imaginary gun which I will get into that in a second I can't fucking wait to talk about the guns and then he throws down the grenade and he's like run for it and the monster who's super fast super strong at no point in time goes oh I should probably fucking run because there's a grenade sitting in front of me he just sits there and takes it yeah well the monster also sounds like he's got fucking asthma <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie there he's probably uh, winded I'm sorry he's but every, he's like, that that's exactly how it sounds like he, he's like cap- gasping for breath you, you know what I'm talking about yes. but that, I think that that's, I didn't care for I, I will say that a better sound for that. the reason why it was so slow was like I said he was methodically doing it he wanted to enjoy it and I think the breathe Breathing part, I hated albeit, it. Albeit, I, hated I know it. you hated it. I, I hated think that. I think that it added to like the I think, or at least I will say this. I won't say necessarily that it was. I will say I think that what they were going for was they were trying to go for that creep factor, sort of yeah. like when, like in Jason or any other movie, where like the antagonist is like you know, you're looking at it through his eyes and you hear that that breathing, like oh, Silence God. of the Lambs, yeah, that yeah, kind with of the, the, like with the night vision goggles, exactly. Mm-hmm. So. It's that heavy breathing. It's that, you know, that anticipation of, oh, I'm about to fucking murder somebody, or I'm about to do this, or I'm about to do that. Well, one thing I think that's really most misunderstood about this movie is, like, is everybody has the impression this is, like, a sci-fi, like, Blade Runner 2, which they tried so fucking hard to do that, apparently. But, like, but this movie is is a buddy cop movie with, yeah. like, with a cat and mouse game. Le- that, that, lethal weapon with aliens. Yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Uh, uh, but, or, uh, like, are demons. Or they even call, like, the beast, uh, like, it's Satan at one point. Tom, yeah, like, they don't know what the fuck he's he's called. Called. Well, well, do you know that the original That's title for the movie, on. the original title for the movie was Pentagram. If y'all didn't know that, it was Pentagram because of the whole thing on his chest and everything. So that wasn't a fucking Pentagram, though. That's no, it what wasn't. it said. Nowhere in the fucking movie did they have it's a goddamn said Pentagram. The, that's well, what I'm said. glad that they didn't because Stu would have had a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> that have been the end of it. They, they couldn't decide what they wanted <laughs> this to be. All right, so you started out with, uh, it's a serial killer. Um, then you started out, uh, continued on, oh, and maybe it's it, it must be tied to astrological because he's doing the Scorpio and you're a Scorpio, so you must have some sort of tie. Oh, no, it's the year of the rat, so it must be Chinese mythology. Oh, no, it's Satan. It's the devil himself. It's Christian mythology. Make up your fucking mind. Go with the goddamn theme and yeah, stick with it. The writer just didn't do a good job at writing this movie, but. I'm going to say this overall, even though the movie is completely flawed. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with Lenny on this. I still think it was entertaining. It was Thank still you. fun to watch, in my opinion. Thank yes, you. it's got horrible acting. It's got horrible flaws, plot holes. It's it's not a perfect movie. It's probably like a D. For you, it would be like an F or fucking even lower than an F. But other than that, I still had fun watching it, but I like movies like that. I enjoy that type of crappy movie. I enjoy that too, but this one, either A, I want you to give it your all and be bad at giving it your all. Right. Fine, I can appreciate that. Or poke fun at yourself and ha- and you know, let everybody know that you know it's a piece of shit. Right. No, this was everybody just phoning it in. You know, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, all right, and it, it, they didn't even care enough about what they were doing to try that yeah. I'm not going to care enough to, to appreciate what you put on this film. I guess I can go with that. So um, the so the the whole and I know <laughs> uh, Tyler pointed this out and I, I will expand on it as well. So there's the scene where the beast or whatever the fuck you want to call this thing, uh, the scene where he's the waste in, of celluloid. Yeah, <laughs> he's in the rail car and his claw starts going through the metal. 
That part's cool. And then all of a sudden, for some weird fucking reason, yeah. it cuts to this limp wrist <laughs> fucking claw thing going, meh. Like, it's so obvious. It's on a track. It's that, so that, fucking that, obvious. Yeah, it's yeah dude. And, and Kim Cattrall's like, oh, no. She's trying to run away from the monster hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, a strong hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then there, there's a scene, too, where, like, um, this is this another thing that I thought was hilarious was that they go, he, they put the fucking, they drop the grenade, okay, and the rail car's gonna explode. This is a big, a fu- big fucking explosion. I've actually experienced, like, not that big, but relatively big explosion. I assume it would take a whole lot more. Well, no, it's not that. It's, it's, it, you're like plugging your ears, like, especially if a flashbang goes off, you're yeah. plugging your ears, closing your eyes, and opening your mouth, and praying to God that you don't fucking go deaf, because it's fucking, it's no joke, okay? They just dropped this massive fucking grenade, okay? And it blows up, and <laughs> Rodger Howard's character's like, this is a perfect time for me to make out with my girlfriend. Yes. You know, oh, and I'm like, yeah, you, and I I'm do, like, I'm like no, bro, no. The two of you, realistically, would be shitting yourself, and there'd be blood oozing from your ears because you're still way too close, and your ears are not fucking plugged. P- you're plus not they making were in, out with plus anybody. Plus, they were in a confined space. Yes. yes. It's so, a confined metal tube. <laughs> that's in a confined brick subway tunnel. Yep. They, All right, yeah. with only very few access points the concussion for the would explosion have been to yeah. go yeah. through. Yeah, that All right, would have been three bad. points Dude. for that explosion to feed into Jesus. The, on either side of the tunnel and where you guys happen to be fucking sitting. It You're feeling everything. They would, It would have fucked them up bad. And yeah. instead they're like, well, let's make out. Yeah. I'm like, nah. Yeah, and even worse, too, like Stone gets up and he's like, watch this. Like the, like that bullshit thing we all said to like to our, like our, the girl we were trying to impress in middle school. Like, watch this. Like just, yeah. The fucking, the dialogue was like, was just atrocious. So a couple last things that I'll touch on and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So um, real quickly, I just want to throw out there that the guy that, I was referring to earlier, um, the YouTuber, his name is, uh, well, his channel is called Brandon's Cult Movie Reviews. Fucking hilarious, awesome guy if you get a chance to check him out. So, yes, the other thing I wanted to touch on is is the the guns in general, okay? First of all, <laughs> his handgun is, is outrageous. Um, the scene where he's sitting there and he's shooting at the gun range, and every time he pulls the trigger, the fucking thing, like, explodes. I'm like, okay, that's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Um, Especially since it looks like they were made of styrofoam blocks. Yeah, oh yeah, it's kind of yeah, obvious. That's and the cheapness. Then there's uh, the 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 mini gun style supposed shotgun. Whatever the fuck that thing's supposed to be, did not sound at all how like a gun should sound. It wasn't really you know whatever. And then the other thing that drives me nuts um, is the scene where he's holding the heart. Now he's holding the heart, and there's all those screams coming from it. That part's cool. I was like, oh, that's fucking that's sick. But then when he shoots it, I'm like, okay, so theoretically, first of all, this gun doesn't exist. But let's say it does. Let's just pretend it does. This gun, you shoot it, anything it hits fucking pretty much explodes. So you can imagine the round's pretty fucking big. He holds his hand out and puts – I don't care if I'm hold. I don't care if I have a, tw- a, mi- a 22 in my hand. I am not about to hold an apple, even if I'm holding the gun, like, within a few inches of the apple and shooting it. While I'm fucking holding it, because I'm going <laughs> to, I might hit my hand, my fingers, I might blow a hole through my finger or my my hand or whatever. Even yeah. with the twenty two, this guy has a fucking cannon in his hand and he's holding this heart and he's like, you know, oh, good, baby, and he like shoots it, whatever the fuck he says, I can't remember. Shoots a fucking heart and doesn't hit his fingers, doesn't hit his hand, doesn't hit anything else but the heart. Bullshit. Absolutely. Fucking yeah. stupid. Uh, that was the only part that I was like, the, what the fuck? The fact that they're implying basically those are. Almost explosive tip rounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way that you can at least try to get some of the impact that they were showing in the uh, scenes. The fact that you have these explosive tip rounds and you're holding something three feet away from the tip in your hand yeah. and you're firing at it, even if you don't by chance hit your fingers with the round itself, the explosion is going to cause permanent damage to your hand and i was like this is such fucking bullshit i was actually rooting when he was holding it for him to actually <laughs> eat it uh, and uh, start doing it that way and then at least maybe he starts getting some of the powers or yeah. some bullshit like that uh, but then for him just to fucking shoot i'm like this is just fucking retarded yeah. i am i'm so done with this fucking film <laughs> i wish you took a bite out of it <laughs> yeah exactly i mean it would have came full circle yeah. like that's what that's what that's the monster what I did i thought they were setting up 
you know, when he was holding it. And I'd see that yellow you know, pus blood. I wouldn't come be out. surprised if that was in the script and Rudger Howard was like, fuck you, not doing it. And Hold on. Like, God he'll, damn it. He'll, so drink, like, he'll drink however no old, however old coffee with the cigarette butts in it. But he won't bite. But he won't a, bite yeah. something. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, the other the other scene, and this is like this is a super minor, but like <laughs> the scene where he's sitting there and he's quote unquote hyperventilating, and the medical, the ambulance people, who the fuck they are, sit there and they go, oh, 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 they just happen to notice in this big fucking crowd of people, they notice him and they notice he's hyperventilating. What the fuck ever? Then they run over and they grab him, and uh, and they give him like this non rebreather mask thing with oxygen, and he's like. <laughs> And he's, like, sucking on it, and he's pulling into his face. And the next thing you know, they're like, he's panicking, quick. And they grab, like, this futuristic injection gun thing, and they go, Chica! they shoot him in the neck. <laughs> I've been on an ambulance. They don't do that. I don't, I mean, yeah, maybe, like, if, if the guy's freaking out, they have to give you some kind of medication to calm you down. They might give you an injection in your arm with, you know, a fucking needle. But they don't t- pull out a futuristic silver gun and go and shoot you in the neck and like fucking calm you down. That doesn't happen. But no. I want to say a lot of movies around that time they showed those uh, injection guns. Basically, yeah, they seem to think that that's yeah, well, like the, yeah, be the commonplace. Yeah, but this yeah. also was made in 1990. This was supposed to be 2008. Right. So, so they're, so they're thinking that in the future, yeah. as of right now, but, and that seemed like a very common theme back <laughs> yeah. in the 90s. That <laughs> yeah. everything's going injection gun based. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, you need to calm down. Yeah. Oh, like, no, dude. I wish. I'll, I'll admit, I wish. That'd be fucking great. Right. Or like, you know, blow dart gun for when people won't fucking shut the fuck up. You're done. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that at all. But yeah. Um, the only other thing I wanted to hit on is um, one of the, they have different, different things as far as music goes in this film. Um, that's just kind of like... Um, you know, your your classic kind of 90s scary kind of music type stuff. Also the techno music in the beginning and the, yeah. and the uh, club scene. Yeah. But there's one particular very distinct song that they um, feature. Whenever there's like a, a slower moment, a tender moment, um, they have like an instrumental of Nights in White Satin mm-hmm. by Moody Blues in the background. I as uh, personally fucking love that song. And... Um, because of the intensity of, of the guy that's singing this song, he loves the woman he's singing about so much that it fucking hurts, and you can feel it in the music. So I big shout-out to, to choosing that song. Um, it also plays in the background in the bar when he's talking to his partner, and they're kind of having that moment where they're actually starting to kind of bond a little bit over like breakfast before um, they get a call that there's a disturbance at his apartment building. So. You want to know the funny thing is originally the person that was hired to do the score was the same person who did the score to a Clockwork Orange and The Shining and the original Tron. Well, that makes Wendy sense. Wendy yeah. Carlos, but Tron. she was rejected. So they compo- it was composed by Francis Haynes and Stephen W. Parsons, who I have never heard of. Damn. And I know scores. They should I'm have a big the score first guy. One. Yeah. So. so overall, you know... Obviously, in this this particular group, you've got people that loved it, people that thought it was all right, and people that hated it. I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Eh, you know, maybe email us or make write a comment and let us know what you thought of the movie. Um, it's a B movie that's unheard of. Personally, I think it's good. And you thought wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Lenny are in agreement, and Tyler and Stu are not. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. We are so excited for the upcoming episodes heading your way and bonus episodes from The Small Batch. If you love our show, please spread the word. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us. Our username is Barrel Flicks. That's B-A-R-R-E-L-F-L-I-C-K-S. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at BarrelAgedFlicks at gmail.com. That's BarrelAgedFlicks at gmail.com credit to white bat audio for the background music thank you guys so much also you can find us on apple podcast google podcast anchor spotify and Castbox. hope to see you next week